Yeah, hey everybody, it's Brian with you from The Game Common, and today we're starting a brand new series with Imperator Realm. So, uh, this is the newest title from Paradox just launched today. Uh, we ended up playing it for about two hours on our live stream, but for the most part, still pretty uh, new to me, uh, as well as probably most of you guys. Um, it's a pretty exciting game. I've watched some other people play it, and um, this game it comes from Paradox. So, if you're unaware of who Paradox is, they're the ones who make games like Stellaris, uh, they also make EU. 4, uh, Europa Universalis 4, as well as Crusader Kings 2, and Imperator Rome is a little bit of a mix of those latter two. It has a little bit of Crusader Kings mixed into it, has a little bit of EU 4 mixed into it, and then there's even a little bit of Victoria as well, uh, kind of intermixed. So, this is a grand strategy game, and because of that, it means it is very complex. Uh, I'm going to be taking this first episode really slowly, as we are going to kind of do a little bit of a tutorial on grand strategy games in general here. Now, I don't uh, like, I guess the first time you hop into a grand strategy game, uh, they can be extremely overwhelming because there's so much math on screen, there's so many numbers, there's so many different variables. It can just be so overwhelming to try figuring it out. And so because of that, because I know a lot of you have never played a grand strategy game before, we're going to be kind of taking it step by step and talking about everything. So if you're familiar with Crusader Kings at EU4, even maybe Imperator of Rome, we might be going a little slow in this first episode, so I apologize for that, but I just really want to make sure we get everyone up to speed on how these games work. Now, I know some people might not like these games because they think they're too complex. I actually would disagree with it. I know that there's a lot of math on screen a lot of times, but I don't necessarily think this game uses like any more math than a game like Civ 6. I think this game, though, tends to just actually put that math on screen for you to see where Civ 6 kind of hides it behind the UI and you really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And so I think you could argue that, nah, I probably couldn't argue that Civ 6 is just as complex because there's a lot more things going on in this game but ultimately I don't think it's harder that much harder to understand I guess if that makes sense so we're gonna go single player we're going to create a new game. Uh, so what is difference about this versus Crusader Kings or Europa Universalis? Both of those games take place much, 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 much later. This takes base, uh, takes place uh, early Rome in Republic era. So we're actually starting 304 BCE. So this is actually 304 years before um, year zero. So because of that, uh, they actually use the AVC, which is, stands for Ab Urbe Conditia, which is basically from the founding of Rome. So we're 450 years after the founding of Rome. Basically, they didn't want a number that ticked down, which kind of makes sense. And so instead of that, we're actually going to tick straight up from here. I think we end up going... If I remember correctly, I think we go to like 300 something AD. Maybe it's not that. Actually, no, I don't think it's that late. I think it's only like 60 something AD. So we only get about 300, 350 years in the game, which, you know, isn't that long. But this is one of the cool things about any grand strategy game is you can play as any Civ you see on the map. Now, some of these Civs are really big and they start off pretty strong. And so because of that, they're going to be a little bit on the easier side. Rome is extremely easy to play as mostly because of... Um, uh, they get a lot of free Casas Belli, which is basically an excuse to declare war on their neighbors. So they get claims on like all of their neighbors. So eventually they can pretty much unify uh, the Italian peninsula fairly easily. Uh, we're going to be playing as Macedon today. Uh, I was debating about playing as Sparta. We tried them in the live stream. They're definitely going to be a little bit more of a challenge. And so because of that, I decided to play as Macedon simply because uh, they're a little bigger to begin with. And so because of that, that's going to give us uh, essentially a little bit more uh, breathing room early game for us to kind of talk about what's going on. Um, that's going to allow us to kind of declare war on some of our weaker neighbors uh, and just going to be a little bit easier in general. Uh, but at some point, I do want to play Sparta because I think it'd be fun to unify the whole coast. Uh, I also would love to come over here and play like as the Sec uh, Seclude Empire. They look like freaking fun, man. Also, I'm pretty sure they should have elephants, right? Do they have elephants? They get the phalanx. They get Calvary Skirmish. They're good with Calvary and Triremes. Someone over here has got to have elephants, man. They get Chariot, they get Raid. Ah, there you go, War Elephants. Yeah, we might have to play as them and go roll around with uh, War Elephants. So our goal is Macedonia, uh, Macedon rather. We're gonna try uniting all of Alexander's empire, which I think means we need to get all the way over here. I don't think we have to do anything with Italy, so Rome will probably be a good ally for us eventually. Who are the recommended? Oh, so they're easy. Egypt is also easy. Uh, easy. Now, Egypt looks really, really big, but if you zoom in, you'll notice that a lot of this is just impact 
impassable terrain. So their country is not quite as big as it seems at first, um, just because most of their civilization is all around rivers and stuff like that. Uh, Carthage is normal. Carthage would be a lot of fun, and at some point I do want to play as them, but you can see they're extremely spread out, which is going to make for a rather interesting challenge with them. We're on a normal difficulty. The secludes are hard. Now, they're huge, and you're wondering, uh, actually, I don't know why they're hard. They're probably hard because uh, loyalty issues. Um, there's a good chance that you might get, like, uh, civil wars and stuff like that in this game. And then Fajiria, which is also hard. Yeah, and I know that they actually start off pretty hard because as soon as your ruler die, which is, like, the first 20 years you basically end up losing a large portion of your country so um that's what makes them a little bit more difficult it'd also be kind of interesting to start out in one of these islands over here uh in like crete and then try you know actually moving up into uh, uh egypt and stuff like that maybe someday maybe someday maybe someday so like i said we're going to be walking through everything step by step as macedon uh political map mode player map mode okay as macedon what do we get so we get greek traditions so we get modernized phalanx so it allows the phalanx ability which we'll show you guys later we can also unlock cavalry skirmish ability we can unlock military colonies and we can also do the raid city we're strong uh with heavy infantry and we're also good with cal cavalry and triremes so our leader is going to be cassandra uh cassander Cassander Antipatrid, Antipatrid, whatever. So he's got a seven military score, martial ability. He's got a six uh, finesse ability. Uh, he's got a three charisma ability. So he's going to be a little slow at generating these points, oratory points. And he's got a four zeal ability. Essentially, all these do is generate you points for each one of these categories, and then you use those points for different things in the game. We start with 49 cities, so this game's a little bit different, where every one of these uh, little uh, names are a different city. We can't actually click on them, but each one of those are cities, and then provinces uh, tend to be a couple of cities put together. So we have 49 total cities. We have 12 in Macedonia, 9 in Macedonia, Secudra, uh, 9 in Chalk. I'm going to butcher a lot of these names 11 in Thessaly uh, 6 in Etolia uh, and then 1 in 1 okay we have uh, 598 pops almost 600 people then these are the breakdown of our people there's four different kinds of pops in the game you got citizens freemen tribesmen and slaves and we'll talk about that later we start with an alliance with thrace uh, Thra thrice isn't thrace is it thrice? I always thought it was thrice, but that doesn't make sense with the A, so shouldn't it be thrice? I don't know, I'll have to Google that. So we're allied with them, which is probably good because this guy is probably not gonna like us, and so we're gonna have to deal with him pretty early on. And then we have a couple uh, countries as well that are our subjects. So we have Argos, which uh, at some point, oh, okay, so there you go, Argos right there. We have you right there, which is, which one? Ubolia, and then Polenia, which was where? Actually, don't see you. Where are you? Oh, way up there. Oh, nice, nice. And so at some point, we can actually integrate those uh, countries into our kingdom, and basically, uh, we just absorb them. It just takes some time and power, usually. Although, I've not tried it in this game yet. So I think we're ready just to launch in. Uh, we got our religion. We got our culture. Okay. Yeah, let's just start the game. We could do Iron Man mode, but I'm probably not good enough for that. Alexander the Great. In Babylon, 18 years ago, the Agrid King Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In five years preceding his death, his continual, uh, continuing military success had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by those uh, potentates styled as the Diadachi. For many years, uh, they and their successors have locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within the sphere of influence into the conflict. The war of the Diadachi will surely continue. Perhaps it's up to Macedon to decide how they will end. The die is cast. So there is our story. So, number one, we got a bunch of different map modes. Every one of these map modes does something a little bit different. The ones that we're probably going to mainly be using is the political map mode, so we can actually, you know, glance out and see everything that is happening. Oh, one other thing I should mention... There is some very wide open territory in here. I um, mean, you'll be like, hey, why is there no country there? Essentially, this is just kind of like uncivilized territory. Um, there are some random people there. But I think if you have a country, I know if you have a country on the border, you can actually go colonize that territory and absorb it into your country. Uh, I don't know if like someone like, you know, Remia 
can they go settle over there? I would think probably not. I think you'd have to be, I think it has to be a bordering one so you can go colonize it. In addition to that, there's also some impassable terrain like we have right here. At some point, barbarians might actually spawn from these. You'll see that it says barbarian power is changing by 0.01 every month. So eventually we might actually have barbarians pop out of this and it's gonna be very similar to like Civ 6 barbarians where you know they will bring an army and they'll start raiding me and killing me and stuff like that. So, but like I said, we're probably gonna stick mostly to political map mode. This is just a quick, easy way for us to glance and see uh, who is what. We also have the terrain map mode. And then the terrain map mode kind of gives you a different idea like, okay, farmland, plains, and different terrain has different like defensive bonuses and stuff like that. Um, and then this terrain map mode kind of gives you the country colors as well, but probably not going to use uh, uh, this one too much. And then we also have our diplomacy map mode where we can see our allies are in blue, um, our subjects are this light green, and then when we start trading with people, uh, then we'll also show up as a different color as well. Um, culture map mode, this is essentially the culture of our people. We can see mostly everyone here is the same culture, which is good because as you're um, absorbing different territories, you're gonna want people to be your culture. Otherwise, as you can see, they're not gonna like you too much. So we actually have two Jewish pops right now, two Jewish citizens in our city. And so because of that, they have a lot less uh, happiness. And so because of their lack of happiness, uh, they will not be producing as much of well, they're citizens, so I don't think they're gonna be producing as much as uh, um, 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 uh, research points. But we'll get into all that here in a little bit. Uh, other thing to note is we have an army right here. We have 21 uh, strong. Uh, we have 21 cohorts. Most of it, it looks like archers, archers, archers. We got some heavy infantry there. We got some light cav. We got heavy infantry, light cav, light cav. Okay, heavy infantry. We're probably going to end up breaking up and putting our light cav in an army by itself because light cav are extremely good in this game. And then we also have some ships here. We have 12 uh, just uh, triremes. Okay, so that's going to be our naval power. Uh, do we have any other armies nearby? Not that I can see. Let's go back here to political map mode. What else do we want to talk about? Okay, we got some numbers up here. First is our treasury. This is our gold. We are currently losing 1.74. The previous monthly balance was 1.74. By the way, I have my GPU CPU settings up there because if you missed my previous series or my other series, basically I just got a new video card and I'm trying to see how much my CPU is bottlenecking me because I'm pretty sure I'm about to replace my CPU too because of the bottlenecking. So that's why that's up there. It'll probably disappear tomorrow. Uh, manpower is how many uh, troops you can build. So we have a lot of manpower. We have 72,000 uh, uh, people. Essentially what happens is anytime I send an army off to go kill, to go fight, um, sometimes it's if you're in a uh, certain city that doesn't have enough supply limit, you can see that listed under the, under the terrain. We will at that point start taking attrition where they basically slowly start losing manpower. And so anytime any of these troops die, we have to basically refill this back to 21,000 with this manpower. Eventually, if this gets to zero, and we are lacking troops here, then essentially we're just never gonna be able to get this back up to 2100 or 21,000. So you can see manpower is kind of important. Um, we are gaining an extra 242 each month and we're not losing any right now to attrition. So that's good. The other thing is if we're gonna go ahead and build some troops, so if I wanted to go build like, let's say some more heavy infantry. Now that is going to go ahead and cost us, uh, how much? How much manpower each? Oh, it costs us a thousand each, which actually makes sense. Okay, uh, let's cancel that for now. Oh, you can, oh, okay. So you can click there to get more. That is actually amazing. Hold shift click to avoid this pop-up. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right, cool. Well, let's cancel that for now. So that's what manpower is. Military power, civic power, oratory power, and religious power we talked earlier. Our leader right here, he has his stats like we saw, 7, 6, 3, 4. And so they are contributing here, right here. So we're getting plus 5 right now uh, per month. Why are we getting plus 5? So we're getting plus 3 from him. So maybe it's everything above 4 gives you 1. Is that how that works? No, because you're at 5 as well. And he's getting 3 and 3 there. Huh. I actually don't know why he's giving us this. Maybe it's because it's how much above the base? So two and then it's giving us plus five? Actually, I don't know. That's a good point. 
I, w I would assume the higher our leader is, the more points he has here, the more points we're going to gain here, obviously. Because um, you can see when that's at three, we're only gaining plus one there. But I actually don't know... Um, I don't know why it's not a direct one-to-one. -one. But anyways, so the better our ruler is, the more points we're going to gain. And then we use these points to uh, make different decisions in the game. Here is our stability. Stability is essentially uh, how stable your country is. Uh, a very stable country is going to tend to be a very happy country. A very unstable country is going to have a lot of revolts. You can see because we have a positive stability, we get extra tax. We have uh, extra legitimacy of our ruler. We're getting extra research points. We're getting extra popularity. Um, just a little bit our subject states are more um, loyal uh, but it costs more to sacrifice to the old gods so you can see stability can go from anywhere to plus three to like negative three a negative three stability would be something like let's say France uh, France is right there uh, France during like the revolutions that they had you know where basically there's just constant uprising and leaders getting their heads cut off you know, something like a negative one stability might be like U.S. right now with uh, Trump, for example, where, you know, the country is still unified. There's not necessarily revolts happening, but there's definitely some unrest in the country. You know, that would be something like that. We're a positive stability. You know, maybe we're Canada right now where we love our leader. Actually, I don't know. Does Canada love their leader right now? You know, or I'm trying to think maybe America during like World War II probably had a two or a three stability where everyone was united for the same cause and there wasn't any uh, 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 dissidents or anything like that. Then we also have aggressive expansion. This number essentially means how the world and how our subjects view us. So the more we war, the more territory we take basically lowers uh, people's opinion. You can kind of think of this as like a warmongering penalty. Um, and it's changing right now by 0 0.07 each month. It's at zero, so it's not gonna go down anymore. And then tyranny, uh, it represents the value of oppression within the country. There are various actions that can increase this. Uh, this, as it gets higher, gives you a lot of really, 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 really bad negatives. So we're gonna wanna keep that somewhat low. Uh, we got our score over here, which doesn't really matter, and then there's our date. All right, so then let's talk about all of these buttons, and then we'll unpause the game here once we start doing some stuff. So we got uh, our current government is an aristocratic monarchy, which means as soon as we die, then uh, our next uh, heir is going to be Philip uh, the Fourth. Interesting. Okay. Um, so that's our government. We have a civilization level. We're at plus forty percent. I don't, actually don't know what that changes. Probably gives you better research, and then you see our pops and all that stuff. And then there's a lot of different numbers here. For the most part, we're not going to pay attention to too much of that. A rural popularity is good. Um, as we get it higher, we will have different effects on it, but right now it's basically just neutral. Um, we have all of these different provinces. So you can see as we hover over, let's move the map as we hover over these you can see each one of these provinces and so each one of these provinces has a bunch of cities in it uh, so every one of those provinces has a different governor here every one of those governors we can actually change the policy so you know we can make more money we can lo uh, increase unrest but uh, one of the pop is going to change to our religion. We can uh, give extra unrest, but one of our pops is going to give us uh, extra, uh, we'll flip to our culture, or at least there's a chance of it happening. So there's a bunch of different things we can do. Some of these we directly control. You can see we are in charge of these four provinces there. These four provinces, or let's see, what is this? These three provinces we don't control. So they're already picking their governor policy. We can change it, but I think by changing it, it actually increases, yeah, and gives us an extra tyranny. Because essentially we're telling them what to do, which, you know, makes people a little sketchy. And then we got a cultural distribution. You can see most everyone's Hellenistic. Uh, most everyone also has a religion. So we probably just want to keep these governor policies where they're at. Um... Yeah, whatever, that's fine there. And then here's a pop type breakdown, which once again, we'll get to here in a little bit. The only thing we really need to do here on this menu is uh, this thing right here. So right now we can get negative 0.1 monthly tyranny and we can also increase our citizen happiness and we can get a bunch more bonus points if we grab essentially mil ideas that fit these three slots. So we have a bunch of different uh, ideas we can go grab. We can grab military ideas, civic ideas, oratory ideas, and religious ideas. And you'll see every idea costs 50 oratory power. So we could technically get four um, ideas, although there's only slots for three. But if we take one military and two oratory power, then we're going to also get this bonus. So we're going to want to go ahead and do that. 
I think what we'll grab right now we only have access to the three I think I'm gonna grab the uh, morale of armies because the morale of armies basically just makes your army a little bit better they're less likely to break when fighting so we'll grab that that seems really really good and then we can pick two oratory ideas so we can lower our corruption corruption is a modifier for your character right now where's our corruption right here we have zero percent corruption as it gets higher you get more negative effects so um getting less corruption is actually pretty good there's a lot of different things you can do with corruption um like for example you can bribe some people to make them like you but that gives you corruption so lowering corruption is kind of a nice way to counteract that we can also get extra loyalty for our generals and admirals, which is always nice, or we can improve the opinions. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the less corruption, and then we're going to do the opinion modifier. So the extra opinion modifier means hopefully uh, the these guys here, you know, are our are, are allies, or rather our subjects. We want their opinions to be very, very high of us. Where is their opinion of us? Uh, which one is it? Oh, I got my Twitch thing up there. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, what is their opinion of me right now? Can we see? Athens, we can see their opinion with everyone. They moved it around. Where's their opinion of us? Alliance. Ah, okay, so we're at 0% diplomatic. Okay, your subtle tribe. Where is the opinion modifier? Do we have to literally f uh, go through here to find it? I mean, I suppose we can go here. Let's see if Mastodon shows up. There's got to be an easier way to do this, right? And Mastodon's not even listed there. Huh. Is it this one? No, that's regional power. Oh, maybe it's this one? I have no idea. I have no idea where the... I didn't actually look at this. But anyways, they have an opinion of us, which we can't exactly find. I'm sure you guys actually know where it is, and so you guys are probably yelling at me right now where it is. But anyways, so they have an opinion of us. When we get their opinion high enough, so like we can improve opinion over time, it just costs points. Um, but eventually then we should have... I don't want to cancel that. There should be an, uh, an option here to actually put them into our country. So influence action. We can sell a city to them. I don't know. I don't actually know where we, how we actually integrate them into our city, or into our country. At some point, we'll worry about that. I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Um, where else do we leave off? So we got all that. But anyways, getting extra improved uh, opinion basically will allow me to get the, a higher opinion with them over time. All right, so then let's look at our government. Uh, we currently have a bunch of possible successors. Right now, he is the primary heir. He's got uh, quite a bit of loyalty towards me, and he has a lot of supporters. You can see no one else is supporting the other guys. Um, now, what's different about this game versus Crusader Kings 2, in Crusader Kings 2, you played as a family. Once your family either got removed from power, or if everyone died off and you didn't have any heirs, then you basically lost the game. This game, we're actually playing as the country, so if, for example, all of my family, my original family, died, we're still going to keep playing as the country. Um, but obviously, having uh, supporters towards uh, not our heir it's kind of bad for the country because that means they're likely to, you know, create civil wars and stuff like that. We also have a bunch of different jobs for people. Uh, these jobs give you a little bit of impact on stuff. So you can see our aggressive expansion is going down. This is giving us the sacrifice to old cause. Gods is making it cheaper. And so every one of these has a slightly different impact. Um, and then we can change our laws here as well. But we're not going to worry about any of that yet. We also have military over here. Once you get 800 points, then we can go ahead and switch up our traditions. And then the traditions can do things like, for example, heavy infantry morale. So our uh, phalanxes are going to be better. Our light cav will be better. Our siege will be better. So we're probably going to end up going down here. Oh, yeah, dude, this heavy. Oof, this is nice. And so, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to go down the main, uh, that uh, middle one here, I think. Cavalry. Yeah, we're definitely going to go down that main one. And so then that's going to increase stats here. I don't think any of this, yeah, all this right now is mostly 0%. You have extra attrition rate, but whatever. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, so that's military. Technology, these then we spend civic power and we can just get like nice little bonuses. And so right now our research efficiency is uh, 80%. Uh, every province we have... We have four different types of people. Hold up, I clicked the wrong button. So we have citizens, we have freemen, we have potentially tribesmen, and we have slaves. Every one of these pops gives a slightly different thing. Uh, citizens give you research points and commerce value. 
Freemen give you manpower. Uh, tribesmen give you manpower and a little bit of tax. Tribesmen are kind of terrible, by the way. And then slaves give you base tax. So you can see the tribesmen only give you 0 0.01 base tax, where these give you 0 0.18. These give you plus 58 manpower. These give you uh, plus 5. So the tribesmen are just kind of crappy. At any point, we can promote them for oratory power. And so we could promote slaves to uh, freemen, actually. Yeah, they go up to freemen, they skip tribesmen, and then we can promote freemen up to uh, citizens. So the more citizens we have in our country, the better our research will be. So this number will actually go up, them, and so we'll be able to uh, basically get new tech quicker and stuff like that. Uh, at any point, we can then spend some oratory power, or sorry, some civic power, and we can just get these, and everyone just has a slightly different thing. You know, hey, we can make more tax money, more uh, commerce money, more experience for our units, so on and so forth. We're not gonna worry about that yet. We'll come back here in a second. We then got a religion tab. Once we get uh, 200, uh, 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 200 omen points, we can then pick one single blessing. And then this blessing is going to affect us, I think for, yeah, 1,825 days, which is how many years? Three 6 9 12 15 is that like five years i think it's five years right and so we can either get less aggressive expansion more discipline more national modifier more commerce more national unrest more research points more tax more population growth now i want to look really quickly at our economy so we're making 13 off tax we're only making one gold right now or duck it off of commerce so it would make so much more sense for us to get more money off taxes versus the commerce so that's 22 percent. so that's not going to really give us as much money as 22 percent for the tax the other thing is getting the discipline for the army would be really good but the people we're probably going to war against i've not actually played as them but i'm assuming the people we're going to war against are going to be fairly easy um and we should have a lot more pops than them or a lot more uh army strength so i'm just going to go ahead and grab the money right away and we'll grab that blessing so that's going to run till october 1st uh 1455 and you can see we ran out of points Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, here's the other thing now. Because we ended up filling up all of those, we're getting an extra two across the board. So now you can see we're at seven, seven, five, six. So we're making a lot more points now because of that. Okay, what's next? Religion, we talked about. Economy, the only thing we really need to worry about right now is we're going to lower our army maintenance, fleet maintenance, and fort maintenance. This is basically how much we're paying. Um, if you lower it all the way, essentially you're losing all your morale. So we're at negative 80% morale. So if all of a sudden this army was to go fight in a, uh, a combat with someone, they would have negative 80% morale, uh, which would be very, very bad because um, once your morale is at zero, your army just routes. So. <clears throat> Clearly, we want them to be at full morale when we go to war, but we can't actually even declare war on anyone for quite a few years. Until November 1st, so we need at least, uh, you know, a month before we can actually declare war. Um, so we'll just save money for now. And then I'm also going to go over here with the commerce, because we're not making a lot of money with our commerce. I'm going to go free trade. So what that's going to do is that's going to lower us our income by 15%. Uh, so basically, it was a little uh, 0.28 is what we're losing now but we get an extra trade route in our capital every trade route whether it's internal or external actually makes you money even if you're importing something you make money off the trade route so we can basically make more money with that extra trade route than with having it on uh here so that's why we ended up doing that with the economy and you can see once again uh well what is our money per turn so we should be gaining 6.45 ducats per month okay cool uh, diplomacy, once again, this is where you can talk to anyone around. So, for example, with diplomacy, we could be like, hey, you, I want to go ahead and ally you. But they won't actually ally with us because they just don't like us. No, they're a local power. We're a regional power. Essentially, we are a little more strong. Since we're a regional power, we can only ally with other regional powers. So, for example, I'm sure we can ally with him. No, he's a major power. Okay. Are you a major power? He's a major power. Thrace is a regional power, so that's why we are friendly with them. You are a regional power, but he just doesn't like us. Is Rome a regional power yet? No, they're a local power. But once they conquer a couple people, then they'll become a regional power. So it's kind of like, you know, kingdom versus empire. You know, kind of that little bit of a difference with that. Um, and then, yeah, that's diplomacy where you do all of that. The other thing is, since we are a regional power, we can actually demand stuff. So we can be like, yo, uh, their opinion must be 100. Where, uh, can we actually say, hey, give it to us or we're gonna declare war on you? I think it's this one, right? 
Maybe they have to actually still like you for that to happen. Whatever, we're probably just getting into warring with people. Uh, and then decisions. So we can switch our government type. We're not going to worry about any of that. We can grab Imperial Ambition, which gives us more ideas. And it's a slightly different government as well. Or we can reunite Alexander's Empire, which I guess is going to be the long-term goal for this. So this gives us 15%. Um, I actually don't know what those symbols mean, but uh, wrong culture group happiness is reduced uh, by 10%, or at least they're happier, 10% happier. Our army morale goes up, our diplomatic reputation goes up, and our freeman happiness goes up as well. And then it changes our name to the Agrid Empire. Nice. So for that to happen, we're going to have to conquer a whole freaking lot of territory, probably. So that's not going to happen for a very, very long time. Uh, we can see all the characters inside our empire, whoopee. Um, we can also look at families here. And so, yeah, um, we're not going to worry about any of that right now. I'm not going to talk about any of that. And so last thing we need to do is we got some trade routes we need to take care of. And we have one import trade route in our capital, which is probably this territory. No, which city is it? Right there. Okay, so you can see we have one of three trade routes right now. So how trade route works is a couple different ways. Number one, you'll see right now in our uh, capital, we have glass, we have wine, we have livestock, we have olives, we have wood, we have horses, we have grain, and we have fish. Now, you'll notice some of these have plus two, which means we have a surplus. And so because we have additional, as long as these are at least plus one, you get an additional bonus for it. So for example, the grain, because we have it in our capital city, we're getting a population growth of plus uh, 0.1. So our city, our capital city, is growing a little bit quicker now because we have additional grain. Now, because we have the surplus, we also get the second one, which means we're actually getting 0.2 uh, to our growth. And so if we look at our growth rate, I actually don't know where the growth rate is listed. Is that this? No, it's Providence Loyalty. Citizen Value. Where's the growth rate? It should be somewhere around here. Essentially, the city's growing a little bit quicker, and I imagine, I imagine they pop in as freemen. I actually don't know how that works. I actually don't know how that works, but I imagine they would grow as freemen. Um, but anyways, because we have extra grain, they're actually gaining it. And so then, as this is the capital, we're also getting the uh, benefits to the entire country. We're getting 10% national manpower across all of our country because we're getting that. Now, we really, really love that surplus bonus, so one of the things I want to do real quick is I want to... Uh, click this and so essentially what's gonna happen now is uh, if we wouldn't have unclicked that what might have happened is people would be like hey we want two of your grains or like one country might be I want one of your grains and another country might want one of our grains and now all of a sudden we only have one grain in our capital which means we lose the surplus so we don't get that extra population growth so we basically click that little button which now is gonna mean that we're never gonna go below plus one on that we also have uh, glass, which is getting us extra commerce. We're getting wine, which is getting us extra that. Um, the other thing we can pick up here is we can get iron, which then allows us to produce heavy infantry units. Horses, which allows us to get heavy cavalry. Wood, which allows us to do triremes. We can pick up camels, which allows us to do camel units. Um, but we can't do elephants or step horses. So hold up, hold up, hold up. How good are camels? So camels get bonus damage against archers and chariots, but they're weaker against heavy cavalry, heavy infantry. And they actually seem really freaking good, man. And they're pretty quick, too. But they're pretty expensive. Compared to, like, the regular, let's see, that's 25, 25, 25, 25. These guys are 10, 10, 10, 10. With a 3, 4. So they basically are slower but they have more maneuverability i think i would rather just stick here with the horses i think so now the one thing i might want to do is trade for horses here because we would like a surplus so what happens if we have the surplus we get extra light cavalry discipline across our entire uh when importing we get light cavalry discipline i think we want to roll that right what is our other options here uh, can we do heavy units? We don't have iron, so I probably want to pick up iron. Yeah, I probably want to pick up iron so we can actually recruit some of our heavy infantry here. Because our army is probably going to be exclusively heavy army, uh, heavy infantry plus uh, cav. Probably early game. Yeah, probably early game. Now, where am I trading this from? I actually could trade it from my own. No, never mind. That's Fijia. We could take it from ourselves, though. 
which means we would not be able to use it there, we'd use it there instead. What other options do we have? We can make some of our people happy. Um, we could get wood so we can do triremes. Can we actually build triremes? We can build one. I think I'm okay with just having one territory that can do that, just for the uh, time being. Precious metals are really good because it gives you more citizen happiness. Let's actually look at happiness real quick. Yeah, they're not at 100% happiness, so we might want to just bump that up and get happiness maybe on both of these guys. Alright, so I think I'm okay with that. Give me extra citizen happiness, and we'll get this from Egypt. And that should give us a little bit of money. So now if we looked here, they're all at 95%, which is nice. If we picked it up again, that would give us, uh, it would uh, reduce the cost for promotions, which is kind of nice. Yeah, that's actually kind of nice. Because then what we can do is we can promote these freemen. Right now it costs 10 oratory power. It would cost 5% if we uh, if we got a, um, a boost to that. I think we might do that. Because we're going to want to boost people around. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go grab this. And then who is this from? This is actually an internal trade route. Okay, so now we have a surplus here. So that means if we clicked here, this should only be five. Their benefit to the entire country, citizen promotion cost. Now, you clearly you're not talking about this because you're already fully promoted. And you're still 10. Maybe I have to unpause the game for that to happen. All right, so let's see. We have a new invention. We still have 150 civic power, so we might as well spend some of that. The other option is we could come here, and we could sacrifice. We could also move some pops around too, but we could definitely sacrifice some manpower to go get a better research rate so we can out-tech everyone. Yeah, we'll probably end up doing that. I think I will just go ahead and promote five of these guys. Let's just go take care of that. And then I will go grab some inventions then since we have some property, uh, some points. So let's see, fabricate, diplomatic reputation, army morale, technology speed, trireme, starting experience. We are going to build some more troops, so that might not be the worst thing. National commerce, national tax. You know what, screw it. Let's just make money. Let's just go straight with the money right now. So our tax income, if we go to economy, we have 16.2. There should be a lot of boost on this. We're getting 5% from positive stability, 5% from property tax, 5% from simple land tithe, and then 22% from blessing to Hades. So we're actually making quite a bit of extra money because of this. So we're normally at 16.2, but now it's up to 18. So we're making an extra two gold because of all these bonuses. Okay, so I think I'm pretty good with that. One more thing, let's go ahead and start building some armies. Cav is actually really, really good in this game, simply because it has a bonus against archers, also a bonus against light infantry, most of which you're going to fight early game. In addition to that, it's significantly quicker to move around. So because of that, I'm probably going to end up... Let's... How much... Uh, let's go ahead and split this army real quick. I want to split in half. I want to create a new unit, and we want to take all of our Cav here. And I'm going to go ahead and put all of our cab here. So we have 7k, we have 14k there. And I'm just going to keep the cab together because there's really no negative to only having one troop type. So 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to do 12 cab. We got plenty of manpower right now, so I'm good with that. And then let's go pop out some heavy infantry as well. Um, let's go 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that's a lot of manpower right now early on, but I think we're good to go. So let's unpause the game. We're on speed three right now. We could probably go up to speed four for the time being. So long explanation, I know, but I just wanted to kind of get through everything and kind of explain everything to you guys. Oh, you know what we needed? We do want oratory power. That's one thing we need is we do need oratory power so we can actually um, uh, fabricate a claim. We need 180 to fabricate claims on someone. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where was one of our client states? You. Relation, actions, fabricate support. Mm. So, uh, essentially, in this game, you can't just straight declare war on one of your neighbors. It, um, well, obviously, I can't declare war. Well, hold up. We'll, we'll wait until the new month, and then we can actually declare war. 
So, okay. So if I click on them and I try declaring war, what's going to happen is we're actually going to lose two stability because of that, because we don't have Akasa's Belli. So essentially, this game, you kind of need a reason to go for war. And usually, uh, that reason is you just go here and you uh, fabricate a claim. Once you fabricate a claim, you spend 180 oratory power and you're like, yo, um, I'm fabricating claim on this province. Essentially, you're telling the entire world that, hey, I think this province belongs to me. And so then because of that, then you can declare war on them and you can go conquer them. Now, obviously, declaring war and conquering them is going to bump up your aggressive expansion, but yeah. So essentially, we can't really do anything for the time being. We're going to mostly be chilling until we can uh, get all those, uh, 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 until we get everyone, um, uh, is this all heavy infantry? Yeah, yeah, this is all our heavy infantry. So grab all you and then we're gonna put you all over here. Um, until we get to 180 and we can actually declare on someone. So we don't have any commanders right now. Commanders are a little dangerous in this game because if they become loyal, um, so how this game works is the more wars or the more battles uh, an army fights with a certain commander, they become loyal to that commander. So loyalty is a huge thing in this game. So you can see that every character in this game, if we went over here, every character has a certain loyalty. Right now, most people are probably going to be pretty loyal to us. If their loyalty is ever really low, they might um, create some issues for our country. What becomes a real huge problem is if they control an army. So if you have an army that is controlled by a commander that's not loyal to you, they basically won't even accept your orders. They're just going to go do their own thing, which is not a good idea. So they want a trade. Uh, they currently want wine from us. This is going to get us 0.54 ducats per month. So we're essentially going to accept every possible trade route, uh, especially since we're not going to trade away anything extra. So the War of the Diadachi. Having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexander the Great suddenly died 10 years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals, the Diadachi, or successors have since fought over Alexander's spoils. Our ruler is the son of Atapater, who was the most senior of Alexander's generals and was given the honor to guard his heirs until they came of uh, age. Upon the death of his father, uh, Cassandander killed his appointed regent with the help from his father's enemies. He then proceeded to kill the heirs and their mothers. Wow, that's beautiful. Antigenus, the former satrap of Phygia, is perhaps the most successful of the successors. He also meddled with the Greek states in control of the fortress was once ours, but success breeds enemies, and now he stands alone and vulnerable. So we have gained claims on a bunch of freaking territories now that go away on the death of our ruler. Okay, then. So once again, yeah, we're going to accept. Once again, yes. And also, we're getting bonus stuff for actually uh, exporting it, too. We're getting extra research rate. All right, so we just got a bunch of claims on people. So we might just be able to immediately go to war. Yeah, we immediately can go to war. Now, that would fight the big guy, which is a little scary. I don't think we really want to fight the big guy. Ooh, Byzantium's over here. So who is near us that we could fight? Uh, probably easiest is going to be to look at the diplomacy map mode, and we can see who's allied to who. So you two are allied together, which probably isn't that scary. You have four cohorts with 41,000 manpower. You have three cohorts with 16,000 manpower. I think that is where we're going to go. Yeah. They're actually currently building a fortress right now. So can we declare war on either of these guys? No, we don't have Akasa's Belli against them. We don't have Akasa's Belli against them. Dang it. What about you? We don't have Akasa's Belli on you. We don't have Akasa's Belli on you. Oh, you know what? We might only have a Casas Bella against the larger nations. Yeah. Probably an easier way to look at this would be to go here and see. Guaranteeing Casas Bella against Thrice. Thrice. Yeah, we don't want you. Seclude Empire's way over there and then Egypt way down there. Okay, so actually that's not going to help me at all. Unless we wanted to go blow up our only ally in the game. Probably not. Okay, so well, we'll keep our money where it is then. All right. All right, we'll go for a little bit longer since this episode is a lot of time of me just, like, talking. We're going to go ahead and merge up all our army. Oh, here's the other thing that we didn't talk about either. So, now, every army also has different actions available, and this is brand new to, um, um, well, any of the games. So, every different ability has a benefit, um, a, a, a strength, and a negative. So, for example... You can see based on our troop type, these percentages are going to change. So we have a lot of heavy infantry. We have some archers in this uh, formation. So if we looked at our cav, 
they're going to be a lot different. So the Cavs are very good against envelopment and deception, or very good at running those. Um, but then here with these guys, they're much better with bottlenecking or shock action or even the phalanx. Now, you'll notice that every one of these also then gets a benefit towards different types. Most enemies we're fighting now are probably either going to bottleneck because uh, they're phalanxes, or they're going to have heavy infantry, um, or they're probably going to be skirmishing because they're going to be a lot of light infantry as well. Well. So we're going to want to pop and kind of switch our actions based on what we have. I'm going to flanlinx for these guys just for the time being, and I'm going to go ahead and do uh, envelopment for these guys just for the time being. But as we declare war and we fight battles, we're probably going to want to switch that up because we'll see, oh, this army right here is using this formation, so we need to um, go use that formation instead. Can we declare war on you? No, we need, uh, yeah, we need oratory power. So essentially, we're kind of just stuck right now. So let's just go speed five for the time being until we can get some oratory power. I probably shouldn't have promoted my citizens then. That was a bit of a mistake. I mean, it was only like 30 points, but, you know, it would save us. You know, we'd be able to get there a little bit quicker. I don't think there's any other way to gain anything right now. A child is born. Okay. Um, this is going to give us slave happiness and give us a little bit extra money. So, hell yeah, please. The other cool thing about this game is we can actually go here and we can actually give these guys their own. Uh, uh, um, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Create new unit. Split in half. Attachment's not allowed. Force march. Reorganization. Where is it? Maybe it has to have a commander. But you can actually uh, automate them now, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, there it is. So we can put them, like, we can say, hey, I want you to defend my borders. And now these guys are going to automatically, autom they're automated, and they're going to go defend my borders. Where are they actually going? They're actually staying right there for some reason, so... Uh, there's very little about which Cassander does not have a scathing opinion. Even Marriage of the Divine appear to brook his unbridled uh, contempt. So now we're skeptical. Uh, we also got a bunch of people. They want some national manpower. Um, sure, these might all be the same now. Light infantry defense. Yeah, I'll accept all of these then. Freeman happiness, because it's just basically going to make us more money. So our economy should be much better now. Yeah, we're making 20. So we're skeptical. What does that mean? Skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. Where is our traits? Where are our traits? I always forget where these are. Oh, here we are. So we're losing one zeal, but we get extra tax modifier, uh, and our omens are a little more expensive. So now if we wanted to call an omen, it's actually 220 now instead of just 200. So different stats can give you different uh, abilities, you know, benefits. He's ambitious, which gives us more finance and prominence. I don't know what prominence does in this game. What does prominence do? Prominence changes. It represents the fame of the character. Ah, okay. And then he also has more charisma. Okay, cool. Our oratory power is almost halfway there. We have a lot of mercenaries right here, so we can actually recruit them if we so desired. And then we could, you know, fight with these armies instead of our own. But I don't really think uh, that is that important for now. Uh, the Hellenistic City State just gives us a gift. Okay. Well, sure, we like you. I'm going to go ahead and move these guys south. Because we are going to get ready to fight these guys. You have a supply limit of 16. Do you have a supply limit of 20 down here? No. So I'm going to put you there. I'm going to split the army and I'm going to put you there. And we're just going to split these two guys. And we might just keep them with two tens. You want usually forts. Okay, so forts, how they work in this game. Um, you'll see like a fort. Like I think this is a fort, right? Try and think. Fort level, fort level. No, there's no fort here. Are the forts just the picture? Those display the capital. And we can see a fort's being built over there. There's a fort here. So how forts work is they basically give zone of control for all of the provinces surrounding it. So for example, if I built a fort here, there's too few people, I need more people. But if I built a fort there, essentially they have to siege down that fort before they can move through this territory to get to the rest of my empire. Um, but to actually conquer a fort, like there's a fort right there, you need at least 10,000 troops, which is why I built 12,000 there. Because when they're suffering attrition and stuff like that, it's usually um, just better to have a little bit more than 10K. Because if it has like 9,999, they can't actually siege it, so. Uh, you're requesting military access. Okay, who's actually fighting over here? That guy over there. Uh, all right. Impatience is a virtue. So our son has become increasingly relentless of late. He believes his stature is deserving a key role in our government. Okay. He will be very displeased if you not grant him an office soon. Is our son good? Not really. Not really. He's kind of bad. 
He's kind of bad. So we could look at government. We could replace Trophus with him. Because they both have a 6 or, or Charisma. So I'm going to do that. That's probably going to piss off that other guy. But he'll be happy. He'll be fine. Thrice wants us to join them against their war of uh, Istros and Melentos. Which ones are these? I-S-T-R-O-S. Istros? Sure, I'll accept the offer. I don't know if you decline if you immediately break alliance. I think it's only if someone attacks them. Um, yeah, we don't have any maintenance. We're not, they're never gonna fight us. So we don't have to really move our troops over there. So I want anything that's gonna give me more oratory power, please. Fabricate claim costs. Oh, actually that works. Cause then we can fabricate claims a little bit quicker. So now instead of 180, we should be able to do it right now. 10%, actually 180, that would be 18 less. So no, we probably still need to wait a little bit. Yeah, 160. They round most of the numbers here, just FYI. So next month we can definitely grab this. Oh, 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 the Olympic Games. So once more, the renowned Olympic Games are due to occur in the city of Olympia. The traditions surrounding the games are ancient, reputedly, uh, reputedly dating back to the days of mighty Hercules himself. Uh, and it's an occasion which all grace rejoices. It's our custom to send the proudest, most young, able son to Macedon to complete on our behalf. We believe we found two ideal candidates, a well-muscled brute of a man named uh, Prephilus and a stout fellow who calls himself Nick uh, Nikarkas. Which of the fine uh, uh, should we go? All right, so you're terrible. You're really good. Yeah, we're going to send you. Yeah, let's go send you. Go there. Okay, do we have fabricate claims? Yes, there we go. And so we can pick which one we want. I'm going to go ahead and do the Atola. It doesn't matter because we're going to steal literally both of them. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and bump up our maintenance. Uh, probably don't care about fleet maintenance, but we will bump up that. And... Why are my troops not moving? Hey, Philip gives us more money now. Nice. Yeah, you should be down here as well. So you can see right now the morale is really, really low. So we're going to have to wait for that morale to tick up a little bit. Uh, actually, were we an idiot on this? He is being guaranteed by Phlegea. That's fine. He can't do anything about it. Are we going to have to conquer Phlegea to deal with that? Did we just screw this up? Maybe we should have gone to this guy instead. No, he's being to you know what? Screw it. We're just gonna do it. He can't. He can't freaking sit here and declaim everything for himself. Life doesn't work that way, man. Also, he's across the world, so we probably won't have to deal with him. How big is he? He is currently at war. Wow. Okay, so he's already at war with a lot of people. So if we clicked here in diplomacy map mode. Yeah, he's already at war with all of these guys. It looks like he's currently winning the war. He's losing some of these territories, but he has some of those already currently uh, being conquered. So he might... I wonder if there's a way to, like, ask him to not do this. Like, can I be like, yo, don't do this? Threaten war. Oh, we could threaten war here. But this only gives us one city. Let's try it with these guys. Oh, uh, you have to have a Casas Belli. And... So should we just threaten war? Then we don't have to worry. They would only give us one city, which is kind of crappy, though. So the highlight of this year's games was during the prestigious chariot race, the Sonoris. Uh, saved a fellow competitor from a certain death when the chariot was overturned. Overall, the victor was declared to be, uh, whatever, first time winner of the Olympics. Yep, 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 yep. So, we gained popularity. Our guy didn't win, which is unfortunate. Do we want to declare this war, man? I don't know. I kind of feel like we still want to go. We do need some generals here. We do need to go ahead and grab some generals. Uh, is our kid... Our kid was terrible, so we don't really want our, our kid to be it. You have a s 10... I will put you in charge of this. He's 50, so he's going to be dead soon, so I don't really care about his loyalty. Um, also, you want generals in charge, uh, even though they might give loyalty to that army simply because they get you more slaves. All right, I think I'm going to put a pause in the game here, and I'm going to figure out whether we're going to threaten or whether we're actually going to declare war next episode. I think we should be okay to declare war on these guys. He has 48 cohorts. 
He doesn't have a lot of manpower right now. We're at 32 with 69, so we could actually match him in power right now. He does have 19 ships compared to our 12 ships. That's actually one thing we could do right now. We could build some ships. I'm going to go ahead and queue up some ships. The other thing is we also have quite a bit of money right now. I'm going to go ahead and build some buildings. So, like, for example, here, we can get some extra local tax if we build a building there. Um, I would love to pop out some forts, perhaps, somewhere, if it's possible. Yeah, we could build a fort here. Maybe near the coast? Yeah, I'm going to build a fort there. Yeah, there's our forts. Simply so if this guy ever comes and declares war on us, he's going to have to kind of go through these forts first. Yeah, we're just going to pop out a couple of these forts. I'm going to do that. How's our money looking? Money's looking good. Um, let's take a quick look at our region here. Uh, you can go grab... Let's go grab more marketplaces with our money for now. Because we're making decent income. So marketplace just makes us more money. So we might as well just keep building marketplaces, right? And then the economy right now, we're at 5.8 uh, per month. And that is actually with us at full maintenance. So, all right. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know if you have any questions about the game. Or let me know if you have any other suggestions. Uh, and as always, hit the subscribe button. Join the game, comment, share your support. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye, everybody.